this is the Overclocks UK Oxygen Gaming PC. It's a pretty awesome build. It sits at least this spec one for around about £1,007 to £1,800. So certainly on the higher end of things, but does feature an overclocked uh, 8600K as well as a Vega 56. So a pretty awesome system. So to give you a quick rundown of the specs, this one is, as I said, an 8600K running at 4.8 gigahertz. Also features a sort of generic Acer Tech 120 millimeter thick push-pull configuration liquid cooler as well as, as I said, an RX Vega 56. It does also feature a Gigabyte, uh, I think it's a Z370 Ultra Gaming Board, as well as 16 gigs of Team Group RAM and a 500 gig uh, 960 Evo SSD, as well as a two terabyte Seagate Barracuda hard drive. The case is the Inwin 101. This case does actually have a very interesting sort of front fan intake, because it's actually on the side. The sort of rear side panel does have some rather nice hexagonal mesh, which allows the airflow to come in, and the fans on the front do actually have Fantex halos on them as well to give a very nice overall red aesthetic from both the board, the graphics card, the Bitfinex Alchemy LED strips, and as I said, the Fantex halos. Overclocks UK did a really good job at building this PC. The cable management, especially on the windowed side of the case, is really very impressive. And even when you do take the rear side panel off, there is a little bit of sort of, I guess, rat's nest at the top of the case uh, in the power supply attic in, in this case. Um, it's still a really nice job, still well cable managed. You you can still access a lot of the extra cables if you need to add any more uh, components in in the future. There's also a lot of room for upgradability with this board. You can add extra RAM without replacing the ones you have. You can add extra, you know, another graphics card if you like, or replace the one that's in there and that sort of stuff. So a really impressive build and a decent spec list too. And just a quick note about the Inwin 101 case. You do have the power button on the front, uh, kind of middle right side. It's a bit of a strange location. It's a bit hidden to a point. There is also a hard drive activity LED under it. On the top you do have headphone microphone and two USB 3 ports and the front uh, in-win logo does also glow red when the PC is on and also the rear uh, the the side panel with the tempered glass on it actually has two pull pins which is a really kind of uh, I suppose semi innovative way of having tempered glass on a case and is actually a very easy way to access the inside of your system so I'm actually quite happy with this. So enough about the PC itself let's take a look at the performance and of course I'm running this through my standard suite of games including 3D Mark Fire Strike Unigen Heaven, GTA 5 and Dirt Rally. I would have included Doom in here but there's currently an issue with it where it just will not start, it just goes straight to not responding and I've actually had this issue not with just this PC but also with an MSI laptop that I'm trying to review at the same time as well. So uh, with that said I will try and hopefully resolve those issues but for the time being Doom won't be included. Let's take a look at the results. Starting off with 3D Mark Firestrike, you have a pretty respectable score on both 1080p, 4040p and 4K. About actually nearly 16,000 points at 1080p, 8,000, 4040p and 4,500 at 4K. In Dirt Rally, you're looking at about 134, 156 FPS respectively. That is on ultra settings at 1080p, 4040p and 4K. And on very high settings on GTA 5, you're looking at 120, 64 and 50 FPS respectively for the different uh, resolutions. In Eugen Heaven, you're looking at a fairly similar result, 130, 77 and 34 FPS. So as you can see, it's a pretty decent system for high refresh rates in EP and 4040p gaming and can just about push 4K if if you need it to. So as you'd expect with the Vega 56 and an 8600K, this is a really comprehensive gaming build and does a really good job of both 1080p, 4040p and even 4K. Now of course this is a stock Vega 56, so if you do want to push the overclock a little bit, you can do and uh, get a little bit closer to Vega uh, 64 performance as well. I would mention on the temperature side of things, the CPU was running at about 75 degrees with this cooler and the card was actually running at about 78 degrees, so not too hot, especially for a reference Vega card. I would however mention that the system was pretty loud. I don't know whether this is specifically just because of the graphics card and its blower style design or whether it's because of the sort of side facing fans or anything in between but the, I just want to mention that the system was fairly loud under use. But otherwise this is a pretty awesome build. They've done a good job at picking the spec for this one and actually building the system. Obviously cable management is a decent enough job too. I would mention that you can customise all of these parts on Overclocks UK's website so the base configuration that you see for 
this uh, part of the system is I think £1,200 give or take uh, and has uh, either a smaller or I think it's a non M.2 SSD and no hard drive and a 580 as opposed to a Vega 56. Of course you can customize this so you could throw in a 1070 Ti instead or even a 1080 if you wanted to to get a little bit extra performance so really it's kind of up to you how you want to fully configure this system but in this specification this is that you know this video shows how it performs and uh, all this sort of stuff. Moving on to the scoring for me this is going to be a 4.5 value of money. I think it's a 4.5 for performance with a 4 for functionality and a 4.5 for styling with I think a 4.5 for the Tetrium GB score and a gold award. It's a really impressive system as I said this, uh, the spec for the system is fairly well picked out and is still quite versatile especially with that 6 core CPU overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz and with a Vega 56 card as well you get some really nice gaming performance. So with that said what do you think of the system? I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. If you want to check out the pricing or just customize your own version of the system take a look at the top link in the description down below as you can check that one out and check out their full system configurator. Otherwise there is Amazon and Overclock UK affiliate links in the description down below so if you want to support me and help me make these videos on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday basis then feel free to use those and of course there is a Patreon link down there too if you want to support me even further. Other than that, that is pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful and informative. If you did, feel free to hit the subscribe button. Of course, if you're new here, feel free to hit that anyway. There will be some videos over here for you to check out. Otherwise, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you all in the next video.